One of Hellsweeper's biggest problems is having so many unbelievably cool things locked behind level. Now, I get we need to play the game, but my god, you need to play a lot of a lot of the game. And specifically play it, unfortunately, in a very specific way. But today, I'm going to be explaining exactly how you guys can make that painful process a little bit less painful. Basically, how to get experience, money, and even everything else in between quite a bit faster because they all scale off of the same metric, it seems. First things first, what scale? scales up the amount of XP and money that you gain when sweeping in the tower or in hell. <laughs> well, the footage that you guys are seeing right now, I basically ran a test. I spent 20 minutes grinding with one of the best combinations and we'll explain why that combination is so good for about 20 minutes, killing things and getting a ton of style points, which converts into experience and other things. And I just kept running this again and again, but I did it on normal mode. So despite literally getting around, I think it's like 500,000 X style points, which is insane. This is one of really, this was a really good run too, that was perfectly catered towards this idea. Um, I only really leveled up one and a half, give or take, uh, around, I think it's like 2,000 XP it ended up being, or 4,000 uh, experience points. But if you contrast that with me doing veteran, which is just one difficulty above normal, uh, I spent an eighth of the time grinding and got basically the same cumulative thing. In the same maybe like 30 minutes of me climbing and veteran, I basically made what I already made when I specifically had a build that was great for grinding. What this tells us is that difficulty rating, getting a higher difficulty and playing on a higher difficulty massively, massively contributes to the amount of experience and XP you're getting. Kind of makes sense, but still. Just something good to note about how it scales. So you're going to want to try to push into higher and higher difficulties. If you're struggling with the game and you want to know how to basically have an extremely easier time with it, check out the video about how to kill the Act 3 boss as well as veteran mode. Um, as well as any mode probably above that. To quickly summarize it, you need to get one perk that you get around level four or three or seven or something like that called Gilded Boots or any sort of shield perk or blessing that you can possibly get. And then also get a Pierce weapon because the final boss, unfortunately, is Pierce dependent or Pierce being specific target damage, pinpoint damage, I guess I should say instead of Pierce. Well, shit, it's already too late. I already made that video. Anyways, <laughs> yeah. so the next thing that you're going to need to keep in your sight line is clearing the act itself. So yes, the difficulty of the run is important, but you getting to the act one, act two, and act three also applies a massive multiplier on that uh, boon at the very, very end. So don't think of like, oh, I'm going to grind this level. And then when I'm done, I'm just going to abandon it and leave. Don't do that. Finish at least the act floor that you're on, boss kill, and then you can leave if you want, because that's when you get the massive boon. If you make it all the way to the highest floor, awesome, but wait <laughs> until you get there, okay? Good. But how do you actually level up? What is XP really in this game? Experience as well as money and everything scales off of style points. Now don't freak out. I'm not gonna have you rolling in midair, vomiting and being all sick and all, no. <laughs> I got you, you're okay. There are two methods to essentially get a lot of experience in this game. One being the best and second one kind of being an okay pass. I'll tell you the second one first. But the reason why these are both viable is because of the same source. They hit a lot and very, very quickly. Essentially, you have a multiplier every single time you hit something that is uh, 10th hit, 12th hit, 30th, 30th hit, 50th hit, uh, 100th hit, and things like that will basically times the amount that you get for killing that enemy. So if you have fire, which is the second, it's not that great, but it's okay, you use fire and you get a bunch of enemies that ideally are actually resistant to fire so that you can really just unload on them and massively tick up the counter that's like a 100 hits, 200 hits. Then when they finally die, you get a massive boon of style points, which is incredibly good. Um, so that is what I would suggest to you guys. Everyone has fire almost immediately. Uh, burn people alive. Uh, get a, a Basically invest in as much mana as you possibly can. Um, but yes, fire is really, really good. You'll get around 5,000 style points per run, which is pretty good, uh, depending on your circumstance, depending on how much mana you have, depending on how resistant they are, all those things. But if you guys can manage to just grind and grind and grind and reach to the level in which you unlock Electro, which is on screen right now, that's the level that you need to get to. If you can get your hands on Electro or Electricity Element, when you combine both of these in your hand, when you have at least plus two of these, essentially what it does, it gives you Palpatine hands, which hit like a thousand times, which is brilliant. And they do a ton of AOE, which is great. The thing with this that's a little bit of a shitty thing is it's a crazy big mana drain. So either you're investing in perks that give you a ton of mana reduction for using this, or you're just getting a ton of a ton of mana through blessings, through perks, through upgrades, things like that. But you also want to level up its damage. In fact, 
there are like XP perks that you can get. I honestly think you're not, you're better off just getting damage perks because you are going to eventually need to kill the thing that you're stacking up combos with, which is just a bunch of hit rates in order for you to actually attain the boon. Otherwise you're just building up a combo forever and it just kind of doesn't feel re really rewarding either. So that is essentially the system that you're manipulating. If you can get a lot of hits on a target and then knock them dead, you get a massive boon of a thousand, a hundred thousand, tons and tons of tons of style points, which converts into experience points and overall good stuff. So how the hell do you actually farm in this game though? Uh, you, you just go level to level with doing Palpatine hands. Isn't that kind of annoying? It is. <laughs> Don't do that. What you're going to be wanting to look out for is you're going to want to push into the sweep as much as you possibly can, getting mana when you can, uh, getting more money because hopefully you have gilded boots or any sort of shield which can help you to survive so that when you're farming you don't have to be all terrified that you're going to get dropped in a split second. If you have gilded boots, you should be fine and you don't spend money, you should be fine. But you're going to be wanting to look out for these style of runs and honestly, you're going to want to wait until you at least have some decent perks. So you want to probably push into at least act two. Hopefully you found some decent perks to give you like mana cost reduction, you've boosted up Electro so you can actually punch some things and knock them dead, things like that. But when you see the towers, the pillars, it knock all of them down except for one. Leaving them up does not give you more enemy spawning. I thought that was the case, but it's not the case. You can just leave one pyre and you should be right as rain. Then the rest is simple. Sit down because this is going to take some time. If hopefully you're playing where you can pull up a, like a little monitor in your quest uh, or in your Oculus or in your Steam browser and just sit there listen to a podcast while you just do Palpatine hands keep an eye on your health dodge around shield comes back pretty quick uh, and you should be right as rain as well as electro kind of stuns people because it hits so many times uh, and that's literally it guys you just want to kind of get as much of a multiplier as you possibly can and you should be fine the only other things that are really important is again try to get gilded boots or any sort of shield perk gilded boots is really good because it scales shield unlike the uh, mana conversion one which also kind of scales but it's not as much, I feel. I feel Guild Boots are really good. And so just to recap essentially what the formula of you going into a farming run is going to be, max out your difficulty as much as you possibly can. Hopefully it's above normal because XP is multiplied uh, with having harder difficulties. Awesome. Then reset your run until you get a shield perk. Ideally you get Gilded Boots, um, which essentially converts all of your money that you gain into shield. That also means you should not spend money at the shop because shield is worth its weight in gold and you can just put all the points into offensive this way. Good. The second thing you're going to want to do is basically pick up either fire or electricity. Electricity is significantly better, but if you're just grinding, a fire will work. But yes, try to get electricity. And then uh, basically try to climb into like the second act if possible with trying to focus on attaining perks that give you increased mana. That is extremely, extremely wonderful. Increased mana, that way you can hold down magic longer, uh, click up the uh, multiplier even more, and then get a massive boon. But you should also invest in some damage for electricity as well. So try to take up both of those. If you ever have the option of more mana or, or da greater damage within electricity, choose more mana. Um, but if mana is not enough, option always go with electricity damage or cost reduction you don't want your electricity being too quickly because you don't want to basically kill things within 10 hits because you won't have a high multiplier but you still want to be able to kill things within a timely manner else will be extremely annoying having to constantly prime electrocute wait 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 out of mana you have to walk around um by the way you can like walk around and your multiplier will not leave that enemy so many yeah you just wait you don't have to quickly get the kill just let your mana recover and hit the same enemy and it will keep up the ticking of where it left off so don't panic there um then when you finally have enough mana when you feel like you can actually be proficient always think to yourself is this a good farm run because frankly electricity you don't really need a lot to make it work but always ask yourself is this a good farm run and sometimes it's not in that case you're better off just ending it quickly but if it is a good run you do have a lot of mana and you do have electricity and you have a shield brilliant 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 uh, hopefully you're at around act two now um wait until you find a pyre run that like giant like pyres that summon enemies break all the pyres except for one uh then just sit there sit down bl blitzkrieg all these enemies with a bunch of hits uh slowly but surely put on a podcast just vibe out <laughs> and kill these enemies dead then finish the act of that you're on so essentially kill the boss and then you'll have an option of basically returning to your place uh, uh, or basically continuing the run return to your little uh, hell sweeper home go to your loadouts level up your weapons uh, and abilities and things like that uh, and that's basically it but guys I wish I could tell you that like if you spend 30 minutes you'll be max level that's not the case you're gonna need to probably spend again there's variables like difficulty rating and how, how much you're willing to actually farm out style points and things like that but 
eh, I still would, I still would suggest buckling up for this being something you're probably gonna have to do like two or three times and really send it when you do it for maybe like two hours. Um, and then you'll have everything and then you'll be right as rain uh, and good to go. Um, I do wish the designers made this kind of easier for us to do and I really hope they don't patch it because it, it's such a pain to level in this game. And I feel like people want to make the process easier if they're willing to grind uh, like this farm route like I'm talking about. So hopefully they don't patch it. But alas, ladies and gentlemen, hopefully that was helpful. People are asking me about it. That's the best answer that I could come up with with the weird things that I have. Again, I would not suggest getting the XP multipliers. I don't really feel like they make the biggest difference at all. Um, I massively think the things that make the biggest difference are uh, just getting a massive hit, hit rate combo going on an enemy and then killing them and then just getting like 10k on a burst. Uh, and if you can do that at higher ratings and get a really good run where you have a ton of mana, you can really just send it for like such a long time and get that rating up to like a 500 and then pop them for probably like 50k is crazy. And again, most of the higher end difficulty survival rate is based on the fact that you have shield or not. Hopefully that helped. I tried to be as thorough as I possibly can, so I didn't leave anyone behind who maybe was confused. Thank you kindly for your time. We stream a lot. I will be covering this game a lot. Let me know what kind of weapon you want to see in the future because I will be continuing to try to grind this game and I want to show you guys all the weapons and the ones that are the most badass and worthy to experience. Thank you kindly for your time. Hopefully I can see you again and goodbye, my friends.